We're into 2023. In fact, it's my first video newly recorded for 2023. And today I wanna to talk about the apps that really stuck with me, the ones I use regularly that I love in 2022 on Mac OS. So buckle up, let's get into them. First off, unsurprisingly, we have Obsidian. It is one that I, I don't even remember the first time I picked it up, but it's been a while. I use it all 2022 to take all my notes, to write my YouTube scripts, to write many of my blog posts, to do research on a book that I'm working towards. Everything goes in there. Lots of stuff goes in there, really. Uh, daily notes. So I don't use daily notes all the time, but when I'm, say, going to write um, an email or I need to be doing some research to collect a post into a Slack or into a GitHub ticket, I will write it in Obsidian on the day, tagged with the client, tagged um, so I can get it later and so that I can just have it in one spot and then just let the text go away. Realistically, we've barely scratched the surface of what Obsidian can do. I've done a ton of videos on it, so check out my playlist on PKM and note-taking if you want to know so much more about Obsidian and what it can do for your workflows. Next up is Plex. I really dove into Plex in 2022. So I'd had it for a while, I'd used it a bit, but it was always kind of sketchy. But at the end of 2022, I picked up a Synology, which sits behind me on a shelf, and really dove into Plex, you know, finished getting everything set up properly so that I can watch it from anywhere. We even just used it this weekend in a hotel, hooked my iPad up to the TV, and I streamed via Plex some of our home movies for the kids. As we were away for the weekend, they just needed to like some chill time where they weren't being crazy and they weren't bugging me, so I also needed the chill time. Plex, get a lifetime license, 100% recommended. Next up is Canva. So let's bring that up. Go to Safari and go to Canva. So I actually use this most often behind me on my iPad, but this is really what it is. Uh, we're gonna cancel out of that. Um, and I use it on my iPad because then I can use the Apple Pencil. So, but I use that and I use the website sometimes to pull files out. So what this lets me do is say, create design. I can choose YouTube with the thumbnail, and then it gives me templates. So I can choose from here what template I may want, say for this video, right? So I could do this right here. This might be one I use, and in fact, I will use it. You will see this turned into a thumbnail for this video. So it lets me, I'll swap out the photo, because that's clearly not me. I'll swap out the photo, I'll do some other stuff to make it really tie into the video and hopefully pop, because I am not a designer, I can say when things are bad, but I literally, literally do not know most of the time what to do to make them good. So we start with Canva. Next up, a recent edition, uh, not recent, I've used it for a while, but I really dove into it fully in 2022, is Raycast. So let's bring it up. It's actually on the wrong screen for me, so let's bring up Finder over here so we can have it show up. This is Raycast, it is a launcher. So some things it does though is, I can create a reminder. You can see here, I've tied that to a keyboard command, which is Command, Control, Option, R. It'll create a new reminder for me. So if we do Create Reminder, I can say, this is my reminder notes. I can add a date to it if I wanted. I can add priority and I can add it to a list if I wanted to say inbox. I hit escape and we've taken it out. So other things it lets me do is type obsidian so I can open a different vault. You can see I can actually go through my vaults and pick which vault I want to open. Um, I use uh, Obsidian also to, um, we'll do the next video on this actually, in the Proud City one, Proud City Docs, to keep docs and keep track of programming stuff at work. So this is the Raycast site. You can download it for free at the moment, right? Pricing, oh, they do have some zero personal use. Teams is uh, 10 per month. So one of the things I like about this is also the workflows. If we go to the store, let's look up uh, Obsidian, is there one? Obsidian bookmarks, right? Obsidian. So we have different um, plugins that we can add, different extensions we can add to Raycast to really launch it forward to let you do other things like have that Obsidian uh, one I used or have reminders or have Things 3, right? I think there's a Things 3 one as well. Things 3 right there. So we can have that as well to you know create tasks in Things 3. So I've used this. I really default to it. I had used Alfred for a long time, but it I don't know, it looked like it had so much power that I was never using. I just wasn't digging into it, so I didn't, I don't know. Whereas Raycast feels easier to use, easier for me to use. I also use it for my snippets, right? I can search my snippets and get in here and decide what I'm going to do with my snippets or my clipboard history is another one. Clipboard, I use that regularly as well to dig into um, just different things out of my clipboards so that I can store multiple things in my clipboard. Something I really wish iPadOS would get. Next up is ReadKit. So this is ReadKit right here. It is an RSS reader for Mac OS. I still do wish that Unread was available on Mac OS. It is by far my favorite RSS client. I use, I do most of my RSS reading over there on my iPad station, but I do read on my Mac as well. And this is the app I use for it. It is 
clean. It's just nice to use. It's available in setup as well. So I get it, not for free, but I get it through my setup subscription. I really like how it deals with uh, everything and the keyboard commands match up between this and between unread. So that's excellent for me that I can have the keyboard commands match up so I don't have to relearn keyboard commands for each system. Next up is BB Edit. So BB Edit is a text editor with GitHub uh, shutting down their text editor, Atom, which I use as my secondary code editor. Uh, I needed to find a new one and BB Edit is it. As you can see, I use it in free mode. For my needs, it is just easy enough to use in free mode so that I don't have to worry about it. Um, I don't have to pay for it. I actually started my whole programming career with Text Wrangler, which was their free version of BB Edit at the time, and now they just have BB Edit with a free mode. So this is an excellent text editor. It's got so much more power that I do not use. The biggest detriment for me is that it doesn't have Vim control keys, and I'm a Vim person through and through. So I just can't use it. I reached out to them years ago. Will you ever have Vim control keys? And they said, no, we won't. So it's an excellent text editor. It's fast. It'll open up massive files, and let's really easy to navigate through them, really easy to do everything with it. BB Edit is a stellar Mac citizen, stellar Mac program. Next, my email client of choice is MimeStream. So this is MimeStream. I'm not going to show you mine because I know it's well overloaded with things I shouldn't show off right now. But it is a great third-party email client. Really only works with Gmail. Not really. It only works with Gmail at the moment. But it's just a really nice one. It's from an original uh, or one of the developers of the Mail.app application for Mac OS. And it is a stellar um, application. It's been free. I've been using it all year for free, but there's a, oh, there's a pricing tab now. Does it actually say it? It does not say it. Um, I wish it came out for iOS as well, iPadOS, and I just use it everywhere. I have used Spark for a long time, but with their updates to their new way, new way of doing email, it just, it's a pain in the butt. Now, I don't like it. I don't like mail.app. I find the pain in the butt. So MimeStream is the one that I use absolutely every time I'm on Mac OS. And I hope it comes to iPadOS, iOS at some point. Now we're going to look at some of the utilities I use. So these are things that I just kind of hop in and hop out of. I use a little bit, pass away. Something that I'm not in every day regularly, like all the other apps we've looked at. Something like this, like Solver. So Solver is a calculator, right? It lets me convert 188 pounds to kilograms or do multiplication easily. Or what I really often use it for is figuring out my finances in US dollars Canadian. So this right here, if I have $1,500 US paid to me, uh, it gives me the total value and it gives me the taxes, whatever the fee that I'm paying as a bank fee to Stripe. That, And then at the end of the day, if I say, oh, I have $5,200 in my bank account, and I need to move that to my other bank accounts for business purposes, it lets me go through here and say, this is where everything goes so that I know where it goes and I can do my finances. Solver is invaluable. I even just used it to make sure I was correct on a tax decalculation formula for work recently. This is Solver 3. I use Solver 2 over my iPad. It works just as good. They don't sync back and forth um, because they're two different versions of the application. But I used Solver 2 for years, and now I use Solver 3 on Mac OS. Next up, Boop. So Boop, I dive into a couple times a week for sure, usually for unserializing PHP uh, strings so that I can see what all this big string of text means. But what it does is it really just manipulates text. doesn't have any save. You can't save anything out of this. But so they say this is the title, and I could just do case. We could choose it. We want this to be sponge case if we wanted, or we could say uppercase. No, go to uppercase, right? Uh, what I often use it for is unserialize. So I would do unserialize. This lets me take data out of a database for a customer or for myself and put it in here where it stays locally on my computer and I can you know, convert it to a human readable format, easily human readable format, as opposed to before where I'd have to go paste it on a website. And then who knows what that website is doing with my text? Is it keeping it? Is it sensitive? But I don't even have to think about it with Boop. Uh, lots of conversions here, lots of excellent ways to manipulate your text. Highly recommended. Now, Bartender. Bartender, you look at my menu bar here. You can see that it is, oh, you can't see it because we need to open up a finder window again. So I have focus on this screen. So you can see my finder window just has finder and then nothing. This is all blank until I hover over it. And now I have all of these other things going. My recording going, right? I have Clean Shot X, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, Hazel running stuff, uh, lots of different things up here. And this is what Bartender does. So if I go over here, right click and go to preferences. So Bartender lets me adjust what's in my menu bar, takes things away so I just don't see everything all the time. And I can adjust my layout, right? Always hidden items or show these are the items I want to see. So I want to see what my CPU is doing, how much memory I have and what my SSD is doing as well. Excellent. I love Bartender. I've been using it for years. It is available in setup as well. So I love it in there and I just keep using it because it keeps my menu bar clean for me.
Now let's talk about CleanShot X. I use this for every screenshot I take. I've changed all the standard keyboard commands to be CleanShot X. So I can do something like Shift Command 4, and I could drag out my screenshot I wanted. So it shows up in the bottom corner, and I could drag it into Slack or into anywhere else. And what I often do for the screenshots you see on the site, though, is that Shift Command 4, then I'll hit Space, and now it's selected this window. And now I can hit edit, and I could say, I say I want to highlight something, I do this often for work. I can choose an arrow, I can highlight, and then I could put in some text as well. And I can move things around if I want to as well, right? Put the highlight there. And what it's actually given me is this nice screenshot with my background. So even if I have other windows back there, it'll take them all out. It will only show me the window I chose to screenshot. I use this for all the screenshots on my site as well. CleanShot X is phenomenal. It does far more than I've talked about here. You can record videos, you can record GIFs. There's so many different options in the screenshot tool that you I, I, you just need it. This CleanShot X is a phenomenal tool. It is also available standalone or in setup. You'll find all the links in the description. Now we're gonna talk about Downy and then Permute because they kind of go together. So this is a film artificial from Patagonia and I wanted to have this kind of on my in my Plex library, something for myself. So I click Downy and I send to Downy. It's gonna tell me it updated, great. And now we can open Downy right here. And you can see it is downloading this video right here for me. It's not, not post-processing it at the moment. But I could. I could choose from all the different settings here. I can choose where it goes. It chooses best quality. Uh, we can go through proxy servers to get stuff. We can go to post-processing. And we can use Permute as well um, to enforce MP3. We can stitch together multi-part downloads. There's lots of stuff we can do here. Now, Permute is another one that goes with this. Permute I use all the time. This is really just an all-purpose file converter. So something I often do is if we go to Finder and I go to Applications and it doesn't even matter what app I use, let's go to Affinity, Show Package Contents, go to Contents and we can go to Resources and I can go to ICNS. So this ICNS icon file isn't going to work well with some of the other things that I have for my image processing flow. So if I drag it in here and hit play at the start, it'll automatically convert it to a uh, PNG file for me. So we hit start, and I would normally put this in my downloads. And now it has done that for me. So I go to my downloads now. I have an app icon right there in a PNG format, which means it's transparent white background, because Canva won't handle the ICNS file and a bunch of other applications won't as well. I use this all the time just to convert files between different files so that I can have the copies of the formats that I want. Permute is excellent for converting big video files or for like this, converting this app icon file. Love them both, both available in set app. Now let's talk about Lungo. It's this coffee cup up here. What this does is just keeps my Mac awake. I generally like to keep my Mac awake. I often running server processes that just need to stay open. My terminal needs to stay active and running. So then I will use this right here. So indefinitely, I'll, usually indefinitely when I turn it on, I used to keep it always on all the time. My Mac never went to sleep, but now I just leave it to indefinitely when I turn it on. So I hit this little coffee cup and it just stays on for me. There are other apps that do this. This is the one that's available in setup that I really like that I've used again four years since I've had setup. Now let's make an honorable mention. I say honorable mention because I haven't used the entire suite and it has just come out at the end of 2022. So this is the Affinity suite of apps. This is Designer, which is an Illustrator replacement. Photo, you use for Photoshop. And Publisher, which you use for InDesign. So I've used Designer and Photo for years on my iPad and on Mac OS, and I have not even touched Adobe software for a long time because I really don't like Adobe software. So now with Publisher being out uh, as an iPad app as well, and these are all cross-platform iPad and Mac. I can use it on both platforms easily all the time. And I jump back and forth between them regularly. These are the photo editing apps, the image editing apps that I use, and the publishing apps that I use as well. So I help my mother-in-law publish some children's books as well. And I do that with Publisher. We lay it all out together, and then I get them up, set up on Amazon for her. Excellent, lets me take my files between my iPad and my Mac seamlessly without any issues. I love the Affinity apps. The honorable mention, because I haven't dove into them as much in the version two software, but I absolutely would recommend them without hesitation. That's it. Are there any apps that you have loved in 2022 that are really sticking for you that you think I should know about? Let me know in the description. If you want to support the channel, come become a member. CurtisMcHale.ca slash membership. Take a course. CurtisMcHale.ca slash education. Have an awesome day.